Hey y'all, so I thought we'd take a look at uh, a mesh analysis problem. So remember that a mesh is a loop, and it's a loop that has no other loops within it. So for instance, when we take a look at the circuit, hopefully you can identify that there's two loops in here. There's that guy, and there's that guy that no have no other loops within it, right? There's no other loops around here, there's no other loops inside here, so those would be meshes. And then we can use the analysis of those meshes to solve for unknowns. So looking at loops like that should remind you of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So one of the things we will do is use Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law to find relationships between unknowns and knowns so that we can solve for what we we want to solve for. In this case, we're going to solve for those three currents. I1, which is the current going through that resistor into that node. I2, which is the current going through that resistor out of that node. And I3, which is going down this resistor. Okay, so to do mesh analysis, one of the first things we should do, as you can see from my guide here, is to find the loops for Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we're going to identify this as loop 1. Let's use a different pen here. Let's say this is loop one, and then let's call this guy loop two, and let's go ahead and write some equations down here using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, if we take a look at loop one, using Kirchhoff's voltage law, let's, sign, let's find some relationships around this loop, within this mesh. So Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and add up some voltages. So if we go down this way, we have this voltage across this resistor. And using Ohm's law, that voltage is current times resistance. So I3 times this resistance, which is 10. As we go down this way, we have this voltage, which is a voltage source, 10 volts. And notice uh, the positive uh, uh, polarities over there and negative polarities over here. So potential uh, difference is positive this way. So the current is going in that same direction. So we add that here. And then as we go around the loop this way, ooh, we're going into the negative terminal there. So the, um, the lower potential, and since we're going the opposite direction as, as what's indicated with the polarity, we have to minus 15 volts. Because remember, current goes from positive potential to negative potential, higher to lower. So a positive current should be going this way. But since we're going around the loop that way, we have to minus that. And then we go this way, and then the voltage drop across here is that current, I1, times that resistance. So I1 times 5 ohms. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit to make it look a little neater. Oh, and we should note that this all equals to zero, right? The idea that the sum of all the voltages along that loop should equal to zero. So we have <laughs> I times 10 minus 5. This is I3. Don't forget that guy. And this is plus I1 times 5 equals 0. Well, look, there's a common factor amongst all three of those. We have a common factor of 5. So let's divide everything by 5. So if we divide that guy by 5, then you have just 2 there. So we can call that I, 2 times I3 minus 1 plus I1. Since we divide by 5, that obviously is 0 to 5 is just 0. And now we can actually, let's make this a little different. Let's go ahead and put the 1 in the other side. Ha, look at that. 2 times I3 plus I1 equals 1. Okay, so there's a relationship between those two currents. Let's go ahead and take a look at this next loop. So, if we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of all the voltage drops along that loop should equal to zero. So if we follow it along this way, and we go over this direction, ah, 
Notice that the direction of the loop is going against the uh, polarity of that source, so we have to subtract that 10 volts. And then it goes up this way, and look, we've written the current as coming down this direction, so we're going to have to subtract this voltage. Remember Ohm's law, the voltage across that is the current times the resistance, so I3 times 10. We go around this way, and the current is going the same direction, so this voltage drop across there is just I times the resistance. And as we go down this way, same current, nowhere else for it to go, same current. So that's I2 times 4 ohms. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. Now hopefully you can see right away that they're all divisible by 2. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 2. Uh, let's also not forget that this whole thing equals 0. Right, since the sum, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of all the voltages within a loop, the sum of the voltage drops, has to equal to 0. So it equals 0, and we can divide everything by 2 to simplify it. So minus 5 and minus I3 times 5 plus, well, if you divide that by 2 and divide that by 2, you have 3 here, and you have 2 there. So let's go ahead and put them together, since they're both multiply, I, multiply by I2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So I2 times 5. And hey, look at what we got there. We have a bunch of 5s in there. So we can divide everything by 5. And we have minus 1 minus I3 plus I2 equals 0. And let's go ahead and rearrange this to minus I3 equals 1. Okay. So what we can do is remember that we have another relationship we could use besides these two Kirchhoff voltage law um, loop equations. We also have Kirchhoff's current law, and we can come up with a relationship between these three currents. So if we take a look, we know that the current going into a node has to equal the sum, the current, sum of the currents going into the node must equal the sum of the currents leaving the node. So let's take a look. According to our drawing, I1 is going in. So let's put KCL over here. I1 is going in. So that has to equal the sum of the currents going out. So I2 plus I3. Okay, well that helps now. Because now what we can do is we can substitute I1, this guy, for I2 plus I3. And now we'll have two equations with two unknowns. And we're going to put this guy over here. So 2 times I3 plus I1, and we said I1 equals that. So plus I2 plus I3 equals 1. Or to simplify it a little bit, 3 I3 plus I2 equals 1. So what we can do is notice that we have two equations now and two unknowns. So let's go ahead and solve for one unknown. So let's say that, uh, let's solve for I2 here. So I2 equals 1 plus I3. And then we could use this. I ah, can't see that, can you? And now we could use 1 plus I3 to substitute for I2 over there. And then we'll have one equation and one variable. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as 3i3 three, plus i2, which is just 1 plus i3. So 3i3 three, three plus i3 is 4i3. Okay, so 4i3, and then uh, we move the 1 to that side, so 1 minus that 1 is 0. Well, that's strange. That means that there's no current flowing through I3. Yep, you can't see that. There you go. Now that means that there's no current flowing through I3. So that means nothing is flowing down through here. 
which means I1 must equal I2 since there's nowhere else for I1 to go. So if we substitute 0 for I3, what this says is I2 equals 1. And then if we want to solve for I1, and notice that I2 equals 1, I3 equals 0, so I1 must equal to 1. I know that's a little bit of a mess there. We can say this. I1 equals I2, which is 1, plus I3, which we found out to be 0 down here. So I1 just equals to 1. So there's our I1. There's our I3. And there's the I2. Okay. So the idea with mesh analysis is that we're going to take a look at a circuit by looking at these meshes, these loops with no other loops inside them, and then use Kirchhoff's voltage law to come up with relationships with knowns and unknowns so that we can solve for our unknowns. Hope that helps a little bit. I would say sorry for the mess, but you can think of this as art. It's nice, beautiful art. I hope this art helps you in some way with any of the circuit stuff you're doing uh, for homework, for school, for work, for any cool things you might be working on at home. Good luck.